Hi everyone, and welcome to Shukin Science. In this video, we're gonna talk about a process known as action potential, which is how neurons take electrical impulses and move them down the length of their axon so that they can transmit those signals onto other neurons. Now, action potential consists of four different stages each of which involves the movement of ions in and out of the cell with the help of these membrane-bound proteins. So what we're gonna do is keep track of exactly what those ions are doing at each stage, starting with polarization. So polarization is what the cell looks like when it is at rest. So this is before it has received any kind of signal. And the reason why we call it polarized when it's at rest is because it actually has a slightly negative charge inside the axon relative to outside here in this intracellular space. Now, when the cell is at rest, it tends to have a high concentration of potassium inside the cell and a high concentration of sodium outside. However, they are not in equal distribution like what you see here, and I'll explain why. So you'll notice that these two proteins here look slightly different. This is a potassium ion channel, and this is a sodium ion channel, and both of them are voltage-gated channels, which means that when the cell receives a signal of a certain voltage, they will open up. When the cell's at rest, they're supposed to both be closed. However, the potassium channels are very, very sensitive and will sometimes open just slightly. We say they are leaky. And so because these potassium channels are just the tiny bit leaky, sometimes potassium, when the cell is at rest, will move out of the cell. And the reason it's going to move out is because these two channels do not use active transport. They are both passive. And we know that during passive transport, ions move down a concentration gradient from high to low concentration. Now, if this was allowed to continue, eventually enough potassium would move out so that it would eventually reach an equilibrium state. There would be an even number of potassium inside the cell compared to outside. And this would not be good for us. The entire reason why this neuron is so good at moving signals along is because it maintains concentration gradients. So in order to counteract any potassium that have leaked out of the cell, the cell has evolved to use this really specialized protein called the sodium potassium pump. And given that it is a pump, it does require ATP to occur. And so with the use of ATP, it's able to move potassium against its concentration gradient. Specifically, it is able to take two potassium ions and move them from low to high concentration, putting them back into the cell. However, in order to make this pump work, not only does it need ATP, but the protein also requires sodium. And so in exchange for those two potassium ions to get put back into the cell, three sodium ions must move out of the cell. So this does allow the cell to maintain a concentration gradient of sodium and potassium, which is a good thing, but it does mean that the inside of the cell has just slightly less negative charge, sorry, positive charges compared to the outside, which gives it its polarized state of negative 70 millivolts. So this is what's happening in the cell when it is at rest. There's always a little bit of potassium leaking out, and then the sodium potassium pump is constantly trying to put the potassium back in, maintaining this just slightly negative potential inside the cell relative to outside. Okay, so eventually the cell will receive an electrical impulse 
and then it becomes activated. It wants to move that impulse down the axon so that it can communicate with the other neurons in the body. This is what we call depolarization. And depolarization will only happen if a signal of at least negative 55 millivolts is received. If that stimulus is received, then the first thing that's going to happen is these sodium channels that were tightly closed are going to open all the way up. So that begins the process of depolarization. And because this ion channel is now fully open, sodium is going to start to flood into the cell very, very rapidly. And so that is one of the main characteristics of depolarization. The sodium gates open. Causing sodium to move into the cell. However, the sodium won't keep moving into the cell indefinitely. Eventually, it too will reach equilibrium. So once there is an equal amount of sodium ions inside the cell and outside the cell, then eventually they're gonna stop moving. Now keep in mind, during this whole time, the sodium potassium pump is kind of doing its thing. It's not like it ever really stops. Um, so you might not have perfect equilibrium, but pretty close. At that point, we say that action potential has been achieved. And that typically is around positive 40 millivolts. So because the sodium was flooding into the cell, now the cell is becoming more and more and more positive. Eventually though, once it reaches equilibrium, it can't keep becoming more positive. And that tends to be around positive 40 millivolts. So that marks the end of depolarization, which we refer to as action potential. When that happens, then our sodium gates are going to close. There's no reason for them to stay open because sodium can't keep moving against its gradient. And at this point, that signal then is gonna start moving down the rest of the axon. And the new goal is to try and restore the original concentration gradients in this part of the axon so that it can respond once again if another impulse is received. So the depolarization process is moving the signal along. The next two stages are basically allowing the cell to recover from that. So repolarization begins by the closing of the sodium channels and the opening of potassium channels. And I don't just mean a little bit leaky, I mean they open all the way. So when the cell reaches positive 40, that's the voltage that triggers the opening of those channels there. So potassium gates now open. And because we have a high concentration of potassium inside the cell, then you guessed it, potassium is going to move out. So it's going to flood out of the cell, causing the cell to become more negative. And again, this won't happen forever. Eventually, potassium will reach equilibrium inside and outside the cell. At which point we can say that the repolarization process has ended. And then of course, those gates will close. Not perfectly closed, a little bit leaky, but you get the idea. Now you'll notice something a little bit interesting. Our repolarized cell, even though now the inside is negative relative to the outside, the ion concentrations aren't quite what they used to be because during depolarization, we had lots of sodium flow into the cell. 
And during repolarization, we have lots of potassium flow out. We basically have a slightly reversed ion concentration relative to what we saw initially. During our last stage of action potential, what we actually see very temporarily is a slightly higher concentration of sodium inside the cell compared to the original at rest neuron. And a higher concentration of potassium outside the cell compared to the at rest neuron. So even though the cell is now negative, kind of like it was during polarization, it actually can't respond to any kind of signal because if this gate was to open, sodium really wouldn't flow in. I have maybe one sodium that can move in and then it's already at equilibrium. So this is known as the refractory period. During this point in time, the cell cannot respond to another stimulus if it were to be received. And so because these ion concentrations are reversed, the cell has to wait for the sodium potassium pump to do its thing in order to restore those initial concentrations, right? So we're going to have a little bit of potassium leak out. However, most of that's going to get pumped back in through the use of that pump. And of course, that's going to be in exchange for three sodium ions. And so eventually, through the action of the sodium potassium pump, the refractory period will be restored into the polarized period. And so now the cell is back at rest. It's back at its original concentration gradients, and if another signal was received, and if these sodium gates were to open, then sodium could flow into the cell again, and the whole process would be able to continue. So that's action potential. Um, I'm going to do a second kind of follow-up video where I summarize that maybe a little bit more concisely, um, so check that out if you need a little bit more review. Thanks everyone.